didn't know what was up, uh, because you know most 12-year-olds don't exactly know what transgender is um, or anything like that. We, um, but I knew that something was wrong, and I didn't know what it was. I just knew I was intrinsically uncomfortable with myself. Um, and I grew up and went through an awful Catholic high school, <laughs> which is awkward. <laughs> um, and you know, just ignoring people, not wanting to have friends, wanting to be alone. Um, and I'm sure everyone thought I was just the biggest lesbian on campus that we didn't come out. Uh, because I was pretty masculine, even though I was trying really hard not to be. Um, it's not so much that I looked masculine, but I acted more masculine than apparently. Um, and even in my childhood, I didn't like dresses, and I wanted to build things, and I didn't want to wear makeup, and I hated my long hair, and I'm taking scissors to it. Um, but when you're young, again, you're tomboy and you can get away with it. Not so much when you're 15 years old and everybody else is talking about boys and dresses and you're like, I hate all of you and I'm going to read this book in the corner by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, I went through adolescence knowing something was wrong, but having no clue what was wrong. And I got to college and it was even more awkward. By this point, I'm becoming more awkward with my body. If some of you were here then, some of you teachers, I, I some of them may remember this. I would wear an over, it did not matter how hot it was, it did not matter if it was 98 degrees, I was going to wear an over shirt over everything because I did not want these to show up. I mean, good God, the amount of, I guess, these there, you know. Um, I, I told you I'm watching you. And in fact, see all of you. Um, and, you know, I was wearing these over shirts and long clothes and closed coat shoes because sandals are girly. And what's interesting about this is now that I look back on it, a lot of what I thought was really misogynistic. Like, sandals are girly, I'm not wearing sandals, only girls wear sandals. And I'm like, sandals are awesome because it's so hot here. <laughs> um, yes, trans people can be misogynists. So can gays. Um, and all of it, you know, I stayed here for the summer of my freshman year being extremely uncomfortable, living by myself and being very happy about it because I didn't have to have a girl right who was in a sorority, which was the ultimate, you know, made me incensed. They're all running around in short dresses and it's so annoying and inappropriate. And now I just be like, cool, go have fun. If you need a ride, just call me. But at the time, I was very, very angry at these early girls and I don't want to live with you. Um, so my summer, I, um, yeah, it was kind of this thing where even more in college, in high school there were whispers, Roxanne's probably gay. I wonder if Roxanne ever wants to go on a date with a girl. She never goes to the dances. Well, in college it stopped being whispers. It started being people coming up and being like, hey, you know what, I'm just wondering if you wanted to go to like, get coffee. And you'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go on a date with me? Are you crazy? <laughs> There's a lot of self-loathing involved in that. If you think you're crazy because they ask you out on a date, you may need to work on yourself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> <I did. laughs> and so I, I suddenly I was kind of like, okay, I'm getting tired of this. Like everyone assumes I'm a lesbian. I don't feel like I'm a lesbian, but maybe I am, and I'm just in some kind of really deep denial. And I'm gonna like look up information on lesbians and work really hard on figuring out if this is right or not. Because up to that point I had I never held hands, I never kissed anybody, like I didn't have done anything because I was just so uncomfortable with myself. So I, find, I look up this stuff and I'm like, this really isn't working for me. Like, I really still don't feel like a lesbian. I'm like, no, this isn't working. And then I happened to see LGBT. I was like, what the hell does that mean? All those letters. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked it up and I'm like, trans, again, it was another one of those transgender, what the hell does that mean? Like, what is this stuff? And all of a sudden, I just clicked on a link randomly. And it popped up, and I almost immediately shut it down. So it was like, oh my god. And I'm not like it wasn't porn or anything. <laughs> 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 um, and then I, I, I kind of opened it back up, kind of, you know, almost like peeking around the corner, like, well, what is this? This is strange and fascinating. Um, and it, it was a site about transgender men. And it was these guys, you know. Most of them, I, I noticed a lot of trans guys like having facial hair, so in general we tend to have more facial hair than the normal average population. So a lot of guys with facial hair because we're really proud of it. Um, you know, just talking about all this stuff like it was perfectly 
perfectly average and normal, and you know, my birth name was Brittany, and now I'm, you know, Bob. And I was like, oh my god. It, it, I've never had this moment ever since then, but I had an epiphany. It was amazing. I had a literal epiphany. My brain went, bloody hell, that's what it is. <laughs> and then it all made sense. Except that it doesn't because you keep changing it. Uh, and so I grappled. They didn't want to tell anybody because even, even me who grew up, I grew up vaguely Protestant. Nothing really intensive. No fire and brimstone that I remember. I don't remember anybody ever telling me that gays were bad or going to hell or even that Jews were going to hell or that anybody was going to hell. I mean, aside from, well, I mean, I guess now that, now that I think about it, they did say people who didn't believe that Jesus were going to hell. <laughs> but I didn't really realize what that meant. Um, but there wasn't a lot of fire and brimstone. And yet somehow I intrinsically knew that I should not talk about this. I need to keep quiet on this one. Let's not tell anybody that I figured this one out. Um, and finally, uh, National Coming Out Day is October 11th. Anybody wants to come out? I recommend everybody should celebrate National Coming Out Day, no matter who you are, because it's really fun to walk up to somebody and go, it's National Coming Out Day, and I'm straight. <laughs> if you're straight, if you're not straight, they'll confuse people. <laughs> But I think it should be a national holiday where everybody has to come out about something that they don't want to talk about, like, hi, I'm Bob, it's National Coming Out Day, and I have pierced nipples, or hi, <laughs> hi, I'm Jill, and it's National Coming Out Day, and I um, have a tattoo that's really embarrassing of my ex's name. You know, something that you don't want to tell people that you should not know, so you can accept your pride in that thing. And now that I'm See, this is why I made notes, because I can take <laughs> okay. um, So I finally, on National Coming Out Day, resolved to tell my parents, and I have the strength, and I'm going to do this. And then I chickened out and told my mother I was by. Totally chickened out. I chickened out. I hate confrontation. <laughs> I may not have chose the best path in life if I don't like confrontation. Um, so finally, Easter Sunday, the, the same college year, but not the same annual year. I go home and I resolve, I will do this. I have a weekend to do this and cope with it, and then I check out again and leave my parents a note on the door. Ow. <laughs> yeah, I hope if I ever have a child, they're not like me. <laughs> um, and I get this call from my mother. I'm in about Hattiesburg. My parents live on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. I'm driving back. I get this call, and my mother is weeping, staring. And, and I have to pull off on the side of the road to deal with this. You know, my mother is like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> what did I do? Where did I, I, had, I was a good mother, wasn't I? I'm like, you're an awesome mom. I love you. You're a great mom. And she really is. She's a kick-ass mom. <laughs> um, this is not even pandering. Um, you know, and then she's like, and your dad's gone because he's gone to the hardware store because that's how my father deals with stress. <laughs> 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 